Senator Jackson. Speaker, it's hardly a surprise that Baroness Thatcher was careless over soup being poured over Lord Howe when she was apparently perfectly prepared to send him out to the wicket with a broken bat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Deputy, Mr. Speaker, when I made my maiden speech all in this chamber um, a little over two decades ago, Margaret Thatcher had been elevated to the other place. But Thatcherism was still reeking, as it had reeked for the previous decade, the most heinous social, economic and spiritual damage upon this country, upon my constituency and my constituents. Our local hospitals were running on empty. Patients were staying on trolleys in corridors. I tremble to think what the death rate for pensioners would have been this winter if that version of Thatcherism had been fully up and running this year. Our schools, parents, teachers, governors, even pupils seem to spend an inordinate amount of time fundraising in order to be able to provide basic materials such as paper and pencils the plaster on our classroom walls were kept in place by pupils' artwork and miles and miles of sellotape. Our school libraries were dominated by empty shelves, very few books, and those books that were there, again, were being held together by the ubiquitous sellotape and offcuts from teachers' wallpaper used to bind those volumes so that they could at least hang together. But by far, by far, the most dramatic and heinous demonstration of Thatcherism was certainly not only in London, but across the whole country in metropolitan areas, where every single shop doorway, every single night, became the bedroom, the living room, the bathroom for the homeless. They grew in their thousands. And many of those homeless people had been thrown out onto the streets from the, long -term, the closure of the long-term mental hospitals. We were told it was going to be called, it was called, care in the community. What in effect it was, was no care at all in the community. I was interested to hear about Baroness Th Thatcher's willingness to invite those who had nowhere to go for Christmas. It's a pity she didn't start building more and more social houses after she entered into the right to buy. So perhaps there would have been fewer homeless people than there were. As a friend of mine said, during her era, London became a city Hogarth would have recognized, and indeed he would. But the basis to Thatcherism, and this is where I come to the spiritual part of what I regard as a desperate, desperately wrong track that the lead that Thatcherism took this country into, is that we were told that everything I had been taught to regard as a vice, and I still regard them as vices, under Thatcherism was in fact a virtue. Greed, selfishness, no care for the weaker, sharp elbows, sharp knees, they were the way forward. We heard much over and will continue to hear over the next week of the barriers that were broken down by Thatcherism, the establishment that was destroyed. We can't take it. <laughs> What we actually saw, the word that has been circling around with stars around it, is that she created an aspirational society. It aspired for things. As indeed one of the former Prime Ministers, who himself had been elevated to the House of Lords, spoke about selling off the family silver, and people knowing under those years the price of everything and the value of nothing. What concerns me is that I am beginning to see possibly the re-emergence of that total producing of what I regard 
as being the basis spiritual nature of this country, where we do care about society, where we do believe in, in communities, where we do not leave people to walk by on the other side. That isn't happening now. And if we go back to the heyday of that era, I think it will, we will see replicated yet again the extraordinary human damage that we as a nation have suffered from, the talent that has been totally wasted because of the inability to genuinely see the individual value of every single human being. My honourable friend from Hackney referred to the fact that although she had differed with Lady Thatcher in her policies, she felt duty-bound to come to pay tribute to the first woman Prime Minister this country had produced. I am a generation who was raised by women. The men had all gone to war to defend our freedoms. They didn't just run a government, they run a country. And the women that I knew who raised me and millions of people like me who ran our factories and our businesses put out the fires when the bombs dropped, they would not have recognised their definition of womanliness as being incorporated an iconic model of Margaret Thatcher to pay tribute to the first Prime Minister deputed by female gender, OK, but a woman not on my terms. Point of order, Sir Tony Baldry. Mr Speaker, the conventions of the House in respect of those occasions, rare occasions, on which the House chooses to make tributes to a person who has been deceased are well established. This is not and has never been a general debate on the memory of the person who has been deceased, but an opportunity for tributes, not an opportunity for honourable members to denigrate the memory of the person who has been deceased. Resume his seat. I'm grateful to the honourable gentleman for his, and I use the term advisedly, attempted point of order. Let me be explicit for the benefit both of the Honourable Gentleman and of the House. All Honourable and Right Honourable Members take responsibility for what they say in this place. The responsibility of the Chair is to ensure that nothing unparliamentary occurs. Let me assure the Honourable Gentleman, for the avoidance of doubt, nothing unparliamentary has occurred. We are debating a motion that says that this House has considered the matter of tributes to the Baroness Thatcher. That is what we are doing and nothing has got in